Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn what a component is and what it's used for. Let's begin. So, as you know, Unity was designed from the ground up to work with components. You have a game object, and that game object can have any number of components. Unity already has many default components, like the sprite render, the transform, or the camera. They are all different components. In order to run your own code, you can create custom components and add them to a game object. To make your own custom component, you simply need to create a new script. So let's make a new create C sharp script and let's call it my component. Let's drag it onto our spaceship game object and check out the code. So here it is, a newly created component script. By default, you can see that the script extends the mono behavior class. In order to add your script to a game object as a component, you must extend this class. The model behavior class contains the base functionality of a component in Unity. The default functions, as you can see, are start and update. Start runs once as soon as the object is active and before the first update, and update runs every single frame. So if your game is running at 60 frames per second, then this update will be called 60 times per second. Let's test that out by putting some logs in here. So let's put a log on start, do a debug.log, and let's say start, and down here, debug.log, let's say update. Let's run the code. Okay, it's running, as you can see, it is constantly printing out updates, and if we stop and we go all the way up here, you can see before all the updates, we have one start. So back in our code, similar to the start, you have the awake, but the awake runs before all the starts. So up here, let's make a private void awake and here do a debug.log awake. One big difference between the awake and start is awake runs as soon as the component is initialized regardless of whether or not the script is enabled, whereas start only runs if the script is enabled. So let's see that difference. Let's run the game and see. With the script enabled, you can see that we triggered an awake and then a start. Now let's Cancel out, disable the component and run the game again. And now as you can see, only awake was triggered. And if we enable the component, there you go, start is triggered. Now with regards to the update, you have three variations. The main update, which we already saw, gets called once every frame. Then we have a late update, which also triggers every frame, but after all of the updates. And finally, we have a private void fixed update which triggers at a fixed rate. You can view that rate in the settings by going to edit, project settings, and then time. And in here you can see the fixed time step, which is the amount of time before each fixed update. The default is once every 20 milliseconds. The physics system runs on this rate, so any changes you want to apply to the physics, you would do inside the fixed update rather than the update. So let's put a log on all of them and see what comes out. And also these functions, by default, they only say void, but in order to keep your code clean, you should also add private, just to make sure your code is as clean and clear as possible. So in here, let's make a debug now log on the update, a log on the late update, and a debug log on our fixed update. Okay, the game is running, let's stop. And if we check out the log, you can see that we got multiple updates. After every single update, we get a late update, and every once in a while, every 20 milliseconds, we get a fixed update. All right, so that's the updates. Now, if you want to do something when the component is enabled or disabled, you have on enable and on disable. These get triggered when the script or the game object is enabled or disabled. So let's add some logs. Let's test it out, and as you can see, everything is enabled, so you trigger the enable. Now, if I disable the game object, you can see disable is triggered. Now I re-enable, and it is enabled. And it also works if I disable the component, trigger disable, enable, trigger enable. These can be very useful if you have some sort of setup that you want to do on an object that you want to activate and deactivate. So if you have an object that would display a grid, you would create the grid on enable and clean it up on disable. All right, so that's the basic functions on the mono behavior component. Now on your component, you can also expose fields to the editor. 
So let's go up here and make, for example, a public int health. And if we check out the editor, yep, there you go. You can see a health value with a number in there. I cannot type letters, only numbers. However, this is a very dirty way of doing things. Since by making it public, we are making it accessible not only to the editor, but also to every other script. If all we want to do is expose the field to the editor, it is better to keep it private and make it serializable. So make it private and do a serialize field. This way our code is nice and clean. This variable is private and can only be accessed inside this script, but it also shows up in the editor. So as you can see, still shows up in there, but now our code is cleaner. Static fields do not show up in the editor. So even if I do a public static int health max, you can see that it does not show up in the editor. You can expose any of the default variable types. So let's copy this and expose a Boolean. Let's also expose a string and we can also expose an enum. So let's first make an enum my enum give it option a my enum and as you can see we have the various types exposed in the editor a boolean is just a checkbox that you can turn true or false a string you can type anything in there and our enum is displayed as a dropbox that contains all of the enums values all right now let's take a look at the script execution order so let's make another script, go down here, make a new c -sharp script and call it my second component. Let's drag it onto a new game object. So create an empty game object and drag my second component. Now by default, the order in which the scripts are run is up for Unity to decide. But if you have a component that represents some sort of system that you want to make sure it is initialized before any others, you can specifically tell it to execute before. Let's first add some logs and see what happens if we don't give it a specific order. All right, let's run the code. Okay, here in the console, you can see that the first component did its awake, then the second one, then the first one did its start, then the second one. Again, this was all completely decided by Unity. However, let's say I want to run the second component before the first one. In order to do that, you can go into Edit, Project Settings, and Script Execution Order. Here you can see the scripts and when they are executed. So by default, every script you make is on default and Unity decides when they won't run. So since we want the second component to run before anything else, so let's first drag the second component onto the execution order and let's drag the second component and put it above the default. If we want, we can also drag the first component and drag it to be after that one, but still before the default time. That means it will run after the second, but before any other components in the default order. So let's hit apply and let's test again. Yep, there you go. First the second component triggered its awake, then the first component triggered its awake, then the second triggered the start, and the first triggered the start. Notice how you first still have all of the awakes, and only then do you get all of the starts. Changing the order of the script execution only changes the order for each specific function that is called. So the first awake, then the second awake, then the first start, then the second start. So there you have it. We'll learn what a component is and what it's used for. We'll learn how to create our own components, how they relate to mono behavior and the default functions we can use to run our code. We also learn how we can order various scripts to execute at specific times in case we have a specific order that must be respected. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.